Hello, I am Jean-Christophe Fimtier, a senior technical evangelist with the Microsoft Interop Strategy Team. And so we are here at PDC 09, first day of the conference, and with me I have uh, Johnny Halif. Uh, Johnny, uh, you've, did, you, you've done a lot of work around uh, Azure, but in a way that people are not necessarily used to, especially at PDC, because you've worked on some Ruby stuff. But why don't you introduce yourself? Well, my name is Johnny. I work as an architect for Southworks. We are a company that usually do work in the net platform. We've been working with Azure since day one. And on my team, we were working and, and we started like, okay, we are doing some Ruby work. And I would like to leverage the storage capabilities that we have in, in Azure, but from the Ruby side. Okay. Ruby side means not just the language, but also having uh, unleash the storage capabilities from other hosting platforms that are usually Microsoft competitors as Google Apps, uh, Heroku, or Amazon. So I said, okay, if I have this brownfield environment where I have a mix of technologies, how can I leverage okay. that? Easily, we go uh, grab the spec. It's a pretty well-written spec on the REST API and we build an SDK around the storage, giving us access to the whole storage capabilities, but from Ruby. Okay, interesting. So you're going to show us a few demos, but uh, in, a, in a nutshell, what you build is really a shortcut for Ruby developers to leverage the, the features, because by default, Windows Azure offers open API, uh, offers uh, XML support on many protocol. So, and we've already built SDKs for Java and PHP. So, it's not that you can't do it with the, without an SDK, but the SDK really makes it easier. Yeah, basically what happens with our cloud services is that you get the full API support and developers are, are getting familiar with leveraging those types of APIs that will enable them to consume those REST APIs. So the thing is, uh, let's bring those APIs, REST interface, to a world where the Ruby dev can leverage his knowledge and the way he usually works. Yeah. Like, uh, I know this is the object model that is common for Ruby. These are the patterns that a Ruby dev will use. So that's the way we read in this okay. thing. So can you show us uh, a few examples? Yes. All right. So here we are a TextMate, which is a tool that a common Ruby dev will use. And this is a small snippet of the API we built. And basically what I'm saying here is I will establish a connection with Azure and I will create a blob container and then I will store something. Let's say hello.txt and I put it hello PDC from Ruby. And I'll say that this is a plain text file. Later on, I'll grab this container and I will make this public. So this will turn the container public. I will run the thing. It went fine. And here on the browser, I have a small application I built that let me go through the containers and for example I can go and, and do something like I don't know like here and I have no blobs let's like this and as you can see I download a file that says something this whole application as you can see is hosted on Heroku and it's simulating a storage explorer written in WPF for Windows but it's actually on the cloud, written in Ruby and leveraging the SDK we have built. The other thing that I would like to show you is another snippet of code that in this case, what this does is here is uh, the same, the same uh, established connection, but instead of working with, um, instead of working with blobs, I'll be working with queues, so you can create async applications using the Azure queues 
from Ruby. So no matter whatever you're hosting, no matter whatever the type of application you're doing, you can host it on a Linux box as a cron that will enqueue things to be processed somewhere else. That's a way, for example, to build uh, connectivity with other web applications that could use any language or run any on any other platform or could run on Azure themselves. Right, so one of the samples that we have built is we are enqueuing things from an Azure web app on a queue and then we queue it with a cron job on a Linux box and perform an actual job written in Linux that has been enqueued from Windows Azure straight. So here, as you can see the API, we have implemented a couple of things like create queues, check a queue size, and queue a message. Messages on Windows Azure can be anything, XML, text, whatever you want to put in there. We have uh, implemented the lock, which is a pattern that uh, Azure uses for queues. Instead of a plain DQ, it will help you uh, like recover from an error doing a pick lock, um, a pick lock pattern implementation of working with queues. The other thing, which is pretty new, as we are talking right now, I have just implemented it, and Ray Yossi just announced it on the keynote, is that we are already supporting the 2009-919 version of Windows Azure, which has been announced today and provides some other capabilities, like this property over here that is called the DQ count, which enables you to detect, for example, a poison message on a communication where you have some message that is bad and is causing you problems. You can check how many times it has been the queue before deleting it or before reprocessing it. So I can run this thing and you will see that the code sample will take a while since it will create a queue and queue and the queue stuff. But the, another point is we are up to date on the Azure version of, um, of the SDK and the API. We are leveraging every new feature like snapshotting blobs, uh, leasing blobs, the new type of blobs that it's called page blob, and all the new features on the queues regarding the DQ count and the... So, oh, I lost it. So, as you can see, I enqueued 10 messages and the queue 10 messages, which is what I expect. <laughs> and then this message has been the queue like zero times before it's been destroyed. So I'm the queue in the message and I getting rid of the message. Another cool thing regarding this is that I have here a website where I'm running the library documentation where you can access all the documentation on the API and how it matches with Windows Azure. Every single operation we are performing is matched with Windows Azure REST API. So here you will find documentations and all the updates that of the work we have been doing. Uh, the code, if you want to this is available as a Ruby gem, so you can download and install and start right away. But the whole code is available for you to download. It's open source. Uh, you can clone me on GitHub or you can uh, push me changes. Uh, we are inviting everyone to do uh, their contribution as we want, as we believe in the Azure storage thing and we want it to uh, grow from we for for us the ruby developers so that sounds very cool very interesting and it, it really brings a new option and new opportunities to the ruby developer so i have a question which is uh, in the ruby world like in many other development world uh, developers are using uh, really advanced uh, frameworks and sdks so in the ruby world rail is one and i'm sure there are also so what about using this library with uh, Rail or any other popular framework? Well, uh, one cool thing is the app I just shown, the Azure Storage Explorer, is a Rails application. Okay. So it integrates seamlessly with uh, Rails, Sinatra, and Rails Metal as the major frameworks for Ruby web development. So you just get the gem or get the source code, 
and get it running on whatever framework you are using. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Johnny, and we will follow up because that sounds very interesting. Okay, thank you. Bye.